Hi, it's Dwyer, GamblersAdvisory.com, DwyerVIP.com. Let's talk about this Joshua Joseph Parker fight. Folks, I, I got to tell you, I'm just not buying it. Right? The fight's an utter farce to me. I don't understand. I just don't understand how you could have a heavyweight unification match and then pick a referee no one's heard of for good reason. The guy sucked. Right? Part of this match was going to be body punching. What I want people to do is to look at the historical CompuBox numbers for both fighters. Right? You, you can't have a referee decide unilaterally to avoid or prevent having the fighters fight on the inside. How could you have 80-odd thousand people come to a heavyweight title fight and then have an amateurish referee who doesn't allow inside fighting? Right? Utterly ridiculous. We've all watched boxing a long time. This guy picked the worst possible times, the worst possible times, to come in and separate the fighters. Let me also say this, too, and I don't say it lightly. I don't understand how Joseph Parker could completely, let me say that word again, completely, Take away Anthony Joshua's right hand. Folks, it's, it's not even part of the fight. He completely takes away Anthony Joshua's right hand, does it masterfully for 12 rounds, and you end up with this scoring? Now look, I get that Joshua's popular. Right? Watching the fight on TV, I sense the crowd. Right? I get that he's a cash cow. But this is too uneven a playing field. The scoring's just simply too uneven in a unification match. I have no doubt, I mean none, zero, zip, nada, that if this very fight, even with this hack of a referee, if this very fight took place in New Zealand, Joseph Parker would win the fight. The identical fight. Right? At the end of the fight, and keep in mind, I thought Joshua closed strong. I did. But I thought he lost. Right? At the end of the fight, Parker's corner, and understand, that's a veteran corner, right? Kevin Barry is the guy who lost to Evanda Holifield, excuse me, was awarded the fight against Evanda Holifield in the 84 Olympics. You remember the fight where Holifield's throwing a punch, they say stop, Holifield hits the guy, gets disqualified. The guy he hit was Kevin Barry. Right, Kevin Barry since then has been trainer for many fighters, including David Tua. Now watch the end of the fight. Look at Parker and look at his corner. Right? I believe they thought, and I know Parker is magnanimous when interviewed after the fight, but I believe Parker's corner thought they won the fight. Right? At a minimum. At a minimum, the fight's close. That's at a minimum. So then I'm hearing nonsensical scores. 118 to whatever, 112 and stuff. Come on. Give us a break. Folks, you don't get to 118 when Anthony Joshua can't even land right hands. You don't get to 118. When the CompuBox numbers, I haven't even seen them yet, and I know, aren't going to show a qualitative gap 
in the number of punches landed by the fighters. Right? You, you don't get to 118. When Anthony Joshua isn't Anthony Joshua, looks even more hesitant than the already hesitant Anthony Joshua is in his best fights. Right? So look, I can, you know, I can sit here and pretend that this fight was an honestly fought affair in front of a great referee. Why would I bother? Right? With these judges, Prime Ali, Prime Tyson would be unable to beat Anthony Joshua in the UK. Hell, this referee wouldn't even allow Prime Tyson to get inside on Anthony Joshua. Several times I thought the referee seemed to be saving Anthony Joshua. Right? Joshua would throw an uppercut. Parker would block the uppercut, right? Parker barely gets hit with any uppercuts in the fight. In other words, Joshua's right hand is doing nothing all fight. Nothing. Now, I got to tell you, I don't, I don't know what's going on in the UK. But in the United States, when you see a fighter completely neutralized, Another guy's key weapon. When you understand that that's not happenstance, that's actually by design. That the feints that Parker's doing, the timing, the jabs, are freezing Anthony Joshua. Right? When a fighter takes another fighter out of his game. And let's face it, we didn't see Joshua's A game. We didn't see Joshua's B game. Right? Parker is never badly hurt. The cut Parker gets, that's off an elbow. That's not even off a punch. That's off an elbow. And you're then going to try to sell me on this wide margin decision? Also, you know, somebody needs to tell the British Boxing Board that yes, in fights, fighters are allowed to fight inside. As it is, as it is, I thought Parker's right hand to Joshua's body was one of the big stories of this fight. Joshua starts wincing late in the fight off the shots, right? And that was with Parker dealing with a ref who never allows him to get inside. So please, I understand Joshua has the majority of the belts at heavyweight. I understand Joshua has great market power. Right? He is the box office king. There's no question about that. Right? But what what we need to have happen, and I say this as a fan of the sport who wants to see the sport survive, is that if you're going to have a championship level fight like this in a glamour division like the heavyweight division between two guys who are unbeaten, boxing should have a very short list of superstar referees that they trust. Right? Was, was Kenny Bayless boycotting this fight? Did Harvey Doc just refuse to do this fight? What about the guy who actually did? Joshua Klitschko won. Think about it. You actually had a heavyweight title fight in the UK where guys were actually allowed to throw punches with bad intentions on the inside where the referee, even as guys were getting dropped in the fight, right? Klitschko twice, Joshua once. The referee lets the fight develop. Why wasn't that guy the referee in this fight? Why are you using unknown dudes nobody's heard of before? 
in a fight of this magnitude. So, I view this as questionable. Right? On my scorecard, Joseph Parker is still unbeaten. Look, I'm not going to go down to the casino and demand my money back. They got it. Okay, fair enough. Let me say this too. Out of fairness to Anthony Joshua, he went the distance. Right? He was the fighter looking good in the later rounds, even on my scorecard. Right? I applaud him. This fight was draining because, as Paulie Malignaggi, who again did a great job on the Showtime telecast, pointed out, the guys were within punching distance for a lot of the fight. Right? I, I think both guys understood they couldn't get closer than that because the referee would step in. Right? This was a draining fight. Joshua was in magnificent shape. Right? Joshua, of course, is developing every day as a fighter, right? He's now gone 12 rounds against an opponent I still feel is very dangerous. Right? It's just a pity that this fight wasn't fought in a neutral location because the judges' scorecards were a travesty. Absolute travesty. Right? It's just a pity that this fight wasn't fought before an experienced championship level referee. Right? I, I, I just don't get it. Right? So, what did I learn from this fight? Just the opposite of the result here. I learned that someone can actually stand in front of Anthony Joshua and take away his right hand. Even after the fight, Joshua talked about his jab. I'm sorry, folks. I didn't think his jab was that effective. Right? Again, Joseph Parker's cut off an elbow. <coughs> I thought Parker's jab was more effective than Joshua's jab. Right? Joshua, as he put it eloquently, said, Look, a good right hand takes you around the block. A good jab takes you around the world. Well, understand, that saying matters when you're adding the jab to the right hand, Joshua never gets the right hand going. I thought going into this fight, Joshua's power was supposed to be the issue. I thought Joshua was supposed to be the man with the 100% KO ratio. He never gets the right hand going, folks. He never leaves home. Right? We don't get to the point of that analogy where we say a good jab takes you around the world, right? Right? Bottom line is, the guy didn't have the right hand. And let's face it, as you watched his jab, you weren't thinking Carlos Monzon. You weren't thinking Larry Holmes. Right? The jab didn't bust up. Joseph Park, it's even worse than that. Joshua's out jabbed. Joshua couldn't even throw the jab because Parker kept fainting. And it threw Joshua off his game. So, in this flat-footed era, I'm just telling you somewhere, Lennox Lewis or Mike Tyson is about to go to sleep and they're tossing and turning in bed thinking, my God, if only I was 15 years younger. Folks, I know Joshua has an incredibly impressive record. He's right when he says, look, I have something like 22 fights or whatever, 21 fights, and I've had, you know, six title fights. You know what I'm about. Okay, I'll agree with him. I can't begrudge a guy who is fighting in unification matches and calling out the only other uh, major sanctioning body heavyweight champion. Right? Let me say this too, and I don't say it lightly. Joshua is really a uh, intellectual type guy. He's a bit of a nerd. You can sense it watching him fight. Right? He's there. He has a game plan. He's making adjustments. He's very well skilled. In other words, he's a guy who has the fundamentals. Now, I can't say that about 
Deontay Wilder. Right? I'll say this about Joshua. He definitely has the fundamentals. But he's the guy, as I said in the pre-fight video, who needs the sun to be up before he starts driving the car. Right? He's a guy who's like a locomotive. He's on tracks. He can't cut and move. He can't get off course. He needs a script. He can't operate without the script. Right? So, over 12 rounds. What I think the takeaway is for the boxing hardcore on this fight is that over 12 rounds, a guy with a great right hand had that right hand neutralized to the point where there are several rounds where he doesn't even throw it. Right? Focus on the right hand. Ask yourself, would that ever happen? And I'm serious about this. Would that ever happen to Lennox Lewis? Would that ever happen to Vitaly Klitschko? And in reference to his jab, look, people know I'm a big fan of boxing. I'm a big fan of the heavyweight division. I want boxing to be great. But please, don't call Joshua's jab a great jab. Hell, Larry Holmes believes Parker has a better jab than Joshua. Right? A great jab is a jab that busts you up. Right? Where the guy's head is snapping back. Where you see the jab and you're thinking, man, this, this opponent needs to do something. Right? Joshua's jab, it's developing. But it's not Larry Holmes level. Right? So, here in the comment section, to the boxing public, and I saw close to 80% of the people watching Showtime thought Joshua won the fight. Right? Please. Showtime, tell us where that poll was held. Well, anyway, in the comment section to this video, what, what I want people to do here is to tell me how Joshua, in a fight where his right hand is non-existent, wasn't that the fight you saw? His right hand is non-existent. And he's landing a jab that's functional, but not spectacular. Right? Joseph Parker isn't busted up. Joseph Parker isn't trying to get inside and having his head snap. Right? How do you get, given those two realities, and given the fact that, let's face it, Joseph Parker did more in terms of getting to Joshua's body than Joshua did getting to Joseph Parker's body. Can we agree on that? When the CompuBox number... When the CompuBox stats come out, we'll look at them. But if you look at the film and you conclude that Joseph Parker did more in terms of his body attack than Anthony Joshua did in terms of his, how do you have these scorecards? How, how do you have these margins? You know... You know, as I wipe my eyes watching this fight, did Joseph Parker hit the canvas? Did, are there are there knockdowns I missed? I thought Joseph Parker was polite to everyone. Was he cursing at the judges between rounds? No, this fight was a political fight. We're looking for a hero at heavyweight. In the UK, Ty goes to the hometown fighter by a wide margin. Hell, at this point, the British Boxing Board can't even give us a functional referee for a heavyweight unification match between two unbeaten fighters. This could have been a great event. It wasn't. The scorecards are part of the problem, right? Um, I thought Parker won the fight. I would not have been upset if this was one of those Jeff Horn, Manny Pacquiao type deals where it's close, but they give it to the hometown fighters. Okay, well, I understand this fight is in the UK. Okay, whatever. 
but come on. You don't get to these scorecards when the hometown guy can't even land a right hand. Come on. Right? That's, that's just absolutely ridiculous. Right? This is the opposite of Joshua Klitschko. I thought that fight elevated the sport. I can't say that for this one. Again, if this fight, the same fight with this referee, took place in New Zealand, Joseph Parker would have the belts right now. The scoring's a travesty. The only bigger travesty was the referee. That's how I see it. Let me hear from you. Tell me the brilliant moments in the fight from Anthony Joshua that I missed. Somebody explain to me, too. How, and I've been on Twitter looking at scorecards and stuff like that. How anybody, I'll even throw this out to the guys on BoxingScene.com. How anybody could give Anthony Joshua the first four rounds of this fight. What's that about? It's, it's as if they got the judges from the Deontay Wilder, Luis Ortiz fight and imported them. Right? Obviously this video is upsetting my kid here. Let me sign off. Let me hear from you. I hope you leave your comments in the comment section to this video. Thanks for stopping by.